Welcome to another exciting episode of uh, those guys behind the camera. And today, you see the chair doesn't like you, right? I see the chair doesn't like you. We um have a very special guest. You know, um, I'm gonna let him introduce himself, and then you know we'll get into the conversation about what we're going to be speaking about tonight. Say it loud. My name is Joseph. I organize Anonymous for the Voiceless in Rochester, New York. We have a chapter of about 250 members, and we do animal activism all over the city. There you go. In a nutshell. You said activism, like, what, what do they act? Do they act like, do they, like, do they act like animals, like something like that? Like, so yeah, no, uh, activism, maybe not the way that you're thinking about it. Um, we're having conversations with the public and basically just getting people to seriously consider going vegan. So I've actually been vegan for about two years wow. and uh, that's basically what we're trying to spread the message for. Basically the reality of animal agriculture where people get their foods and make some connections that people normally don't like to think about. Okay. Yeah. See that's, you know, and, and, and it's timely. It's actually timely into some of the things that's happening with this chicken sandwich that everyone's going nuts over. Yeah, have you heard about KFC? Yeah. Brand new vegan KFC in Atlanta it sold out in four hours. There, there's a line wrapped around the entire store. See, so, you know, with the power of social media, you can, um, you can get it out there faster. You know, that's a powerful thing. So, let me just tell you, uh, give you some background. Me and Alan, we was walking. I think it was uh, a party in the park. And uh, I think it was a Queen tribute band. And uh, we saw these guys and gals, women and men, and they were um, holding like these TVs. And each television had like an animal being slaughtered or, you know, things like of that nature. They were showing you exactly what's happening to the food that we are eating. And so I stopped and there was an older gentleman and a woman. And uh, Joe, he was, he, he was holding court with some other people. <laughs> um, so that's how we met because yeah. the information that they were putting out, I feel that we need this information. I'm an information type of person. So I love information, I love knowledge. You can never get enough of it. So I wanted this brother to come and, and tell us because he's, he's in the space. Like we may know, but he knows <laughs> when it comes to this. So we're, I want him to really, you know, begin his breakdown. What, what made you get into this? Like, did you ever eat meat before? Sure, yeah. So I actually ate meat for about 18 years. Meat, dairy, eggs, I'd have huge steaks. Uh, and uh, that was completely normal for me. Basically what changed, I would say, is I started to realize that there are a lot of things that I had never really thought about when it comes to animals. Um, before I was vegan, I actually ate uh, meat and dairy and also worked at McDonald's. Hmm. So I was a manager at McDonald's for about a year as well. And I remember uh, hanging out with some of the managers, they showed me some slaughterhouse footage of McDonald's cows. And I remember actually watching that footage as a manager and uh, thinking, yeah, no, I just have to not think about this as I'm watching their throats get slashed open. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, that was my actual response. It's just, I have to not think about this and then I'll be fine to go about my life. About three months later, um, you know, I never really went away, actually seeing what happens to the animals, and uh, things started to click. That's, uh, that's basically when the journey for me started. I took a seven day vegan challenge, tried some smoothies, shakes, stuff like that, and basically day one was over, I felt awesome. Day two, you know, things were going great. All the way to day seven, um, I was like, why just do it for seven days? I guess, you know, I'm feeling good. Let me go to day eight. It, you know, it was done. Right. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, ever since then, I've been vegan. That's, that's amazing. That's, that's the song. You know, I you know, I did that with beef on a on a whim. 
It was 1996. I'm like I'm about to go all the way back to. <laughs> it was. Tell us the story, Black Ray. It was 1996. Cold summer night. <laughs> but yeah, and you know, it was almost like a dare. Somebody Please was like, you win. "I'm about to get. Uh, you can't stop eating uh, beef because we was gonna get some steak sandwiches." And I'm like, man, I can, I, you know, power of the mind, I can do whatever I want to do. Right. And next thing you know, it was about 10 years from that day that I had beef. Do you remember what made you try that? Try stop eating, stop eating meat? Well, you know what? It was really just, um, it was a bet. It was a bet, but it was, it was just, my mind is, you can do whatever you want to do when you think about it. The thought is like that. So when I had the thought, I'm like, oh, you know, the work is actually thinking like, wait a minute, I can't, I got, I can't get no spaghetti. Oh, hold up. You know, you start, you thinking of the steak sandwich, <laughs> but you're not thinking of like all the other stuff that yeah. come along. So you gotta break, you know what I'm saying, that pattern first. You gotta wean yourself off. So it made me think on that aspect, like, okay, Okay, it's starting to get easy, really. You know what I'm saying? Because you can find alternatives, or you know, you can find some substitute. Yeah, you right. start eating fresh foods, and like I was eating fresh vegetables and and fresh fruit, and you know, you feel better. You just you know, you didn't get headaches. You didn't feel saggy. Right. Like you just felt good. You didn't get all full and want to just do nothing. So, so that's enough about the story. Um, sorry about the story. I ain't got enough about my story. But uh, back to you, Joe. Sure. Because, uh, you know, y'all see the green screen. Ooh, pardon me. Y'all see the green screen. This chair is wobbly, yo. Y'all see the green screen. So that's going to be um, a couple of uh, things going on back here when you watch the actual TV show. Yeah. And y'all are going to see what's happening to the food. The things that you're, you're going nuts over and crazy over, you're going to see exactly what happens. And he's going to show you and tell you some things that I think that y'all should actually um, bear witness to. Right. Yeah, so the one thing that I think keeps people from really being aware of animal agriculture is just the convenience of being able to pick up a nicely packaged piece of meat and uh, it has a you know a picture of a happy cow or happy chicken somewhere in some field and uh, it's it's nice to think that the meat that you're getting is actually that you know happy animal of that picture but at the same time we kind of forget that every single animal has to experience what it's like to become a product you know whether or not it's a cow, a pig, a chicken, a fish, um, they're all experiencing some wild things simply for our taste pleasures when you break it down. Wow. Wow. And you know what? The one, the video you, I think y'all had, and it was, um, besides the chickens all caught up and looking like they just going crazy because they just pecking each other. It's like they know something yeah. ain't right. This is not their natural state of how they're gonna live. So, but it was, I think it was, was it the beef? I mean, dude was kind of kicking the beef, punching the beef. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that's, what you, that's what you're eating. Yeah, so let me ask you, do you think uh, in any time an animal is gonna walk into a slaughterhouse willingly? Bagog. So, um, <laughs> no. in that way, uh, we, we're not just going to walk happily in there, we're going to have to force them. And so a lot of that footage you see, just the forceful practices, that's, you know, standard simply because they are conscious and not happy about the situation, and we have to coerce them into that position. So, yeah. You know, just the thought of, because I, I do believe and understand that I think, you know, we are more base as plant eaters. Uh, however you want to put it. I mean, it, it's, the main cameras is getting all the other stuff. All yeah. this, we want it up to our face. We're seeing the sweat up 
and the pores and the hair. We want to see the sweat. No, I'm sweating. Are you sweating? Yeah, I'm sweating. Oh, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. Shit. <laughs> so, I mean, event-wise, because I remember um, the older gentleman saying that he, that y'all was going to do some event in, in the park. Correct. Is it, did that already pass or was so, it September? No, absolutely. So we actually have a veg fest for Rochester coming up. That's September 14th. It's going to be at Martin Luther Jr.'s Park, and that's in downtown Rochester. Um, we have favorite park. Say yeah. it again. Say say the um, date again. Yeah. So check out Veg Fest Rochester. That's going to be September 14th. Highly recommend you check that out. It's going to be free admission, but you know if you'd like to donate, even three bucks is awesome. Um, we've got lots of different booths, lots of vendors, just tons of information. Come to learn, come to just have a great time. Everyone is happy to have you there. Man. Yeah. Looking forward to see you there. And then you learning, I mean, what is, what is, what is that about? Is you, um, what are you learning when you go there? Like, if I was just somebody that was walking by and, you know, maybe I eat meat, maybe I don't. But if I was just somebody walking by, what, what would I gain from coming to this type of event? Sure, so um, basically along from just booths with different types of products that are available in Rochester, you're gonna get speakers, people like Dr. Chris, um, who is the chair of the Department of Health and Physical Education, he's gonna be there. Um, that's on uh, Monmouth University. We also got a few other speakers. Sarah Goodenough is a local vegan business owner. And uh, you know, you can give shout outs to him and if you get, if they yeah. got a business address, yeah. get about the address. Let people know because people need to know these, these things. Are, yeah, these are all speakers. So once you get to VegFest, if you want to just sit down and learn something, you've got people talking all day in the tent. Um, Dr. Milton Mills, um, his little blurb is a critical care physician who has been featured in the movies What the Health and the upcoming The Invisible Vegan. Um, so these are all 2018 and we have an awesome lineup for 2019 as well.